Hey, he's all gone. This is Ian Harris from Australia, aka Ianapolis, your acrylic guru. And today I did a little experiment. I got one of my glass palettes. And I just did a painting on glass, okay? But it's a different way that I had to do it. But all in all, it's a tutorial how to paint that painting, but on your canvas you'll find it a lot better. And you look just straight up the screen there, there goes all the colours that we're using. There's not too many colours in this, but there's a probably about five or six, I don't know, but there they go anyway. All right, so we'll get stuck into this, okay? Now here's my glass palette. I'm starting off with cadmium yellow in the middle here because I want a bit of a sunset and I'm gonna just dance it around and get the brush to make it fade off a bit like so, like that, okay? So we're coming around. Now I'm gonna wipe the brush and get these edges. Okay, now I'm grabbing my crimson red and I'm coming around the yellow. So I don't want to contaminate the yellow yet. I want to come off this circle of red now, slowly come off about there. And then I'm going to wipe my brush. And then I want to bring that into the yellow which should create some orange. There we go, look at that. Right, I've got to wipe the brush again as it's picking up paint and keep coming around into that yellow from the red. This is my glass palette. I'm just trying something on glass here. Just, I don't know what made me do it, I just wanted to. There we go, wipe the brush again. get that orange happening. Now what I'm going to do is clean my brush. I'm picking up the yellow and now I want to bring that yellow back into that red to create our orange. So I'm getting it into there, creating orange into the red. Okay, there we go. Come over here a bit. Now I have to pat it up and down because it's glass and if I stroke it across like a brush stroke, it's gonna peel it off the glass. Now what I need to do is to clean that brush. Now what I'll actually, I'll grab another one and this brush is dry. I wanna lighten that transition. Just so it's not so harsh. See how it's lightening the transition of that glow there into the red wipe that come again into there that's pretty much done what I want it to do I'll grab another brush and clean the middle of this yellow up because it's a bit contaminated with orangey colors there there we go we want the center there now I'm using a smaller brush and it's got some white on it just to get some intensifying whiteness in the middle here and we'll bring that out as well. It's just subtle but it's there. Now I'm going to wipe that brush just so it's not picking up too much paint and I can soften the edges. There we go. That's all I wanted. Look at that. Right, I have my phalo blue. Now everything I have to do on this is stamping on and off. So I'm going to start in the corner up here and get our sky on. I don't want to touch the red yet because I don't want to contaminate all this blue. So I'm going to come around. Stamp that on. Okay. Now my brush has paint on it. I don't need to pick up any more paint. I'm going to start blending this blue into the red. Okay, I'll just start at the bottom. Blending it into the red. Hopefully that red is still wet enough to 
change that colour into a bit of a purple. Now I'm going to dry that brush or just wipe it on my paper towel and get some of that into that red again. getting there. Now I'm going to pick up the red again and get that back into the blue. I'll put some on, grab me blue brush and we should get some purple happening backwards and forwards into the red and into the blue and we're getting some purple happening okay. Go again, we'll get the red. Kiss that down, blend it, blend it, get that transition light and beautiful. Grab that blue brush and blend that into the blue to get that purple. doesn't matter how far out it fans out just so long as we've got some sort of dynamic darks and lights happening here I'll grab the red again and that blue brush again get that out into the blue so we've got white yellow orange red, purple and blue. Get some more red, just about done here. And finish over here. I'll use this brush to finish it off. And I'll come back to this one actually. It's got more blue on it. So we've got some dark colors in there happening. Now what I've got to do is wash this brush both of them so as I can just fix that red back up okay I've got every color the way I want happening here now I'm getting the red I don't want to kill the orange and I'm getting the red back just where it's got to go because I want red in the sky wipe that pick up some more red I'm just killing that harsh purple off the red there we go wipe the brush use another one to now get the red side done first so you're not going to destroy it with dark colors that's it Need a lot of brushes for this. Wipe it and blend that out into there as well. There we go. This bit here is killed it a bit. There we go. I'm gonna wipe that and get this. Softer like that. I'm quite happy with that. That's what I was after. All right, I'm grabbing white on my fan brush to get some clouds in here now. So we'll probably come up. And into this sun here that is creating its own colors through the cloud and I'm going to blend I'm sort of tapping this because it's glass 
I want this to, it's going to pick up the blue for the shadow of the cloud, then it's going to pick up the purples and other colours. Wipe the brush as you go. And fade it down into there. Wipe your brush. And we've got dark shadow under those clouds. Or under that cloud for now. I'll just tickle the tops a bit. Wipe the brush. Okay, there's one cloud. Now we'll get another one in there. Be just in front of it somewhere here. Scoot him all the way into the middle of that sun there. There we go. Now we'll blend that. Leaving the top white so you don't kill it. Wipe the brush. We've got a couple of sweeping clouds coming across the setting sun. Now see, this blue has dried. I'm used to using retarder. I'm going to pick up a bit of blue on the brush, wipe it on my paper towel, and then Get that back in there. There we go. It sort of worked. Still a lot of white there. But that's all right, that, that'll do me cloud. Now we want something on the other side. Okay, we'll put something here. Oh, that's a nice hike. Oh, look at all those colors coming through there. All right, we'll blend that. Blending it from just under halfway down to the bottom of the cloud. Wipe the brush. And it's picking up those sunset colours to lay in the cloud. Okay. Now what I will do is tickle the top of that, maybe. That's it. And we'll get another cloud on top of that. Okay just to sit him down. There we go, something like that. Get the bottom of that cloud in there. Coming across the sun there. All right, I have some white, flowing white paint on the both sides of my flat two inch brush. And I want to come from the edge where the waterline is, that side and that side, that side and that side. Now I've got to wipe this brush. Now I want to come all the way across and try and merge that. Now I need some water, but I've got to be careful. This is glass. Let's see if we can get that paint to move across like it does on a canvas. Just doing it. See, it's pulling the paint off there a little bit, so I've got to be careful. I'm trying to make water here. That'll do it. Put something in the middle here. Now I've mixed up the red and blue that was on my palette so I'm not wasting it. It's made it a dark brownie black and I want to do a foreground. So I'm going to keep it horizontal and have some kind of foreground coming across my painting. <clears throat> and then I can fill it in and put some trees or shrubs or something there. So this is working out good because this dark colour that I mixed up are the colors that's in the painting. So see, I've got to stab this on like that instead of brushing it on. Because if I brush it on, I could peel the paint off underneath. 
That's only because I'm doing this on glass. If this was on canvas, my God, this painting will probably be finished by now and it wouldn't be as much trouble. But I'm just experimenting here as my mind goes crazy when I'm at home and need to come up with some ideas. The problem is on glass, I find it's drying very quick. All right, so we've got our foreground laid in there. Now before I put anything more here, I need to put my horizon line in. So I'm gonna very lightly dance this across the canvas here, but I've got to be careful not to scratch the paint off the glass. So I've got to stamp it on. Okay, now we'll get a bit more. <clears throat> Just get all these in the area where you want it. Now what I'm going to do is up in the distance there, I'll just stamp it on and intensify some of it just to give it that glaring feel up there. It always pays to have the center of your paintings lighter in color. Maybe put a bit down here somewhere. It's just sinking everything down. Okay. All right, now we're getting our forest green and coming over this dark to create some sort of ground cover onto this darkness. I'm just using a real thin two inch brush to get some sort of, I wanna keep some depth and I wanna keep the lay of the land in its own way. So we'll get them in there like so. I hope it's picking up this forest green, it's a dark color. But when I highlight it, it might bring it to life, I hope. Now we're going to use sap green. And we'll put some sap green in here, not too much. This is gonna, I think I've just discovered there's a footpath here, so we'll better bring that into play as well. So get that side done. And this side done. All right, now we'll grab the last color, which would be yellow green. Now we're getting this yellow green. Try not to kill all those dark colors underneath. You will find yourself having a lot easier conviction doing this on a canvas. I'm just doing it on glass because like I said, I was bored and I wanted to try something. I'm gonna leave some deliberate darks for the edge of our footpath or trail, bush trail, whatever it is. Get some over here. All right, we'll go to the other side as well and just get that done. See, I've added a bit of water to this, not too much, just so it'll come off the brush. When your paint's really thick, it's hard to get off the brush. All right, that's it. We've got our depth in all of that. Put some uh, there. This is the very top ground cover of our grassy moor or lands mass there. Oh, I don't like that big blob I just put there. So what I'm gonna do is grab some of the forest green, sap green, and I'll go over that. 
blend it in a bit. That's all right. I've just cleaned my brush and I'm picking up some cadmium yellow just to really highlight this in certain areas. I don't want to stamp this all over the the, the mound there, otherwise it's going to start making it look all bland. I, I want this sort of just in some areas. That'll do for there. And a bit on this side here. Just mainly on the top and that's it. So you can get carried away, don't get carried away in. All right, now we'll put a footpath in there. Now I'm grabbing my fan brush, I'm using raw sienna. And I want to get the beginning of the footpath, which is about here somewhere. And start scooting that in. Trying to keep some of the dark in there. And some of the dark between the footpath and the grassy knolls, I want left dark here and here as well. This is our first color tone we're having in the footpath. I want it to sort of scratch out like that too. I don't want a big blob there like I've got there. All right, that's fine. Get a dark a bit there. And fix this bit here up. Okay, wipe the brush or wash it. Picking up the yellow oxide now, we want to kind of cover that raw sienna, but leaving hints of it there. And this can be put on darker or lighter in tones as well. Okay, right down there. And just to break this up, I'm going to wipe the brush, pick up some white and highlight some of that footpath now, mainly at the, the front edge there. And just about that much, wipe the brush and bleed that through, blend that through. Maybe pick up some more raw sienna and darken this area here up again, but that'll do. All right, like I said, I was mucking around today, so we'll take this tape off and just see how the edge of this little quick exercise looks. All right, come over and have a better look. All right, that's just painted on glass. It would have been a lot easier for me on a canvas, but I've got my glassy water look. I've got some foreground with some depth and I've got some sky there. If it was canvas, I would have blended some more tones through here, but unfortunately, because it's glass, I cannot, but that'll do, I'll just sign this now. All right, hope you like that quick little exercise that I painted on glass. I'm gonna say goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.